The first thing that we want to do whenever we are doing Euclidean geometry and, oh, you're only writing your paper one on Thursday. Oh, okay. All right, cool. So paper two is not going to help you for Thursday, but that's fine. It'll help you for when you do write paper two. You haven't written paper two yet, iPhone. Wow, that's quite late. It's actually better though. It gives you more time for a revision than the others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We wrote paper two first. Really? That's so interesting. That's very weird also. Yeah, That's sure. That's very strange to write paper yeah. two first. What's, are you at a government school, iPhone? Or are you IEB? Yeah, that's quite interesting because even IB normally starts with paper one. Yeah, always start with, with paper, paper one, two. never with paper two. All right, anyway, never mind. Maybe iPhone will, oh, maybe they've just answered. Private it's a private college. Oh, okay. All right, that's why it's obviously a little bit, a little bit different, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. So when we are doing um, any part of maths where we have got a diagram, it's really important for us to read the information that comes with the diagram first. Sometimes they put all that information onto the diagram for us and sometimes they don't. So if we don't read the information, we can get stuck. And I know that very well because it's happened to me lots and lots of times. All right, so please read the, the information first and try and relate it to the theorems that you know. So, okay, so it says in the diagram, O is the center of the circle. ST is a tangent to the circle at T. M and P are points on the circle such that TM equals MP. All right, and they have put that on the diagram for us. <clears throat> when we read the words, okay, so let's just go back. O is the center of the circle, all right? What do we think about when they tell us we've got a circle center? What theorems do we relate that to? Angle at the center. Absolutely. So angle at center is twice angle at circumference. Perfect. Then it, it could be something else. So for example, if they, in this case, if we have got um, radii like OT and OP, then it means it's possible for us to have angles opposite equal sides. So P2 could be equal to T2. Another thing being given the center of the circle that we could relate it to is radius perpendicular to tangent. We have to have a circle center to have a radius as well. Okay. Um, in the case that we have a diameter, we obviously also have to have the center of the circle or a line going through the center of the circle. So maybe we could use angle in a semicircle if that was possible. All right, but all of those things would be things that you would be thinking about. When you read the word tangent, what theorems are you thinking about then? Turn chord. Absolutely. So tan chord would be one of them, tan chord theorem. What else? What other tangent theorems do you know? Radius perpendicular to tangent would be another one. And the last one that you would think about would be tangents from the same point if there was more than one tangent. Okay, which we don't have in this case here. We've only got one tangent. Okay. Um, They've told us additionally that M and P are points on the circle. Uh, TM equals MP, OT, OP, TP are drawn. And they've said to us, let angle O1 be X. Prove with reasons that STM, so STM is this angle down here. Prove that it is equal to one quarter X. And look at that, guys. It's out of seven marks. Okay, so this was a problem-solving question um, that I took out of one of the past papers, and I want to do this with you this evening. Okay, so <clears throat> what is T1 equal to? 
based on the information in the diagram, what is T1 equal to? O2. O2. No, T1 is not equal to O2. Katlejo, go for it. Um, isn't it equal to um, um, T2, ma'am, which is uh, T1. So you're saying is T1 equal to T2? Yes, ma'am, or P1. Or P1. Okay. Yes. All right. I like that. What would be the reason for that? Why is T1 equal to P1? Uh, ma'am, I remember the 10 chord theorem, ma'am. Absolutely, tan chord theorem. Okay, so those two would be equal. So incidentally, those two would be equal to each other as well. So that's fine. All right. Now we've identified two other angles that T1 is equal to. Somehow we've got to go from the angles in pink to this angle X over here. How are we going to do that? So angle P1 and angle uh, T2 are accounted for. What's the relationship to X? Let me ask you this question. Is MTOP, is it a cyclic quad? Is MTOP cyclic? No. So it's not cyclic because we can't prove that it's cyclic with the information that we've got because O2 or point O is not at the circle. So where else have we seen a diagram that looks like this in the theorems that we've done where we've got a quadrilateral inside, but it's not cyclic? What other place have we seen this? What am I drawing here in blue on the right hand side? If this point here O is the center of the circle and that's A and B and C, and this is angle O1, what can you tell me um, C is equal to? What am I referring to in the blue? Yes, Lissetti. Hi, ma'am. Hi there, how are you? Good, thanks, and yourself? I'm fine, thank you. Ma'am, C is equal to two times O2. Okay, so, so two of C would be equal to O1 in the blue. All right, good, Lissetti, you were very close. All right, what's the reason for this? If you're still there, Lissetti, do you know what the reason for this is? Angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Good, okay, so angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Good, well done, all right? Then they showed us something else way back in grade 11. We still had the circle center. And then what they did is that they took radius OA and instead of it coming down here, they pushed it up there. So there's O and there's A now. And they did the same thing with OB. They pushed the lines up over there. They're still radii. And now we've got C connected to A. So if C is here, C is connected to A and C is connected to B. All right, we've still got the angle at the center is two times the angle at the 
circumference. So they've created a quadrilateral inside, but it's got nothing to do with quadrilaterals. Its angle at center is twice angle at circumference. So I'm trying to give you a hint. Can't you see the similarity between the second diagram and the one on the left in the question? So in other words, <clears throat> OP and OT are the radii. They've been pushed up. PT subtends M at the circle. So M is half of which angle? M is half of which angle? O2, yes, 100%. So how big is O2? How big is O2? In terms of X, I mean, because we can only work in terms of X here. How big is O2 in terms of X? Yes, Katlejo. Um, is it 360 minus x? Beautiful, Katleho. Well done. Okay, and that comes from angles around a point. Good. So O2 is 360 minus x because of angles around a point. O2 is twice the size of m because of angle at center is twice angle at circumference. So this means that m is going to end up being 360 divide, sorry, minus x divided by two. So that gives us 360 minus, sorry, I beg your pardon, 180 rather, 180 minus half x. All right, now we've got the size of O2, we've got the size of M. We know that MP and MT are equal to one another. So what we can do is we can work out the size of P1 in terms of X, and then P1 is equal to T1. All right, so that's quite a lot for us to do. Let me show you what we would do from here. Okay, first things first, we've got to do what Katlejo said, and we've got to explain why O2 is equal to 360 minus X. That comes from angles around a point. Then we need to explain why M is equal to 360 minus x divided by 2. That's because of angle at center is 2 times angle at circumference. So that means that m is equal to 180 minus half x. If you <coughs> add M and P1 and T2, you would get 180 because that's a triangle, all right? But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to state that angle P1, actually, before I do that, just to be pedantic about things, I'm going to state. MP equals MT given. Therefore, P1 equals T2 because they are angles opposite equal sides. Now I'm not going to work in terms of 
T2. I'm going to work in terms of P1 because P1 equals T1 or STM because of tan chord theorem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if I have two of angle P1 and I add what M is equal to in terms of X, which would be 180 minus half X, I will get 180 degrees angle sum and triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 180 and the half X over to the other side. So that leaves me with two of P1 is equal to half X. Is everybody happy with us so far? And now I'm going to divide both sides by the two in front of the P1. So what happens when I get a uh, half X divided by two? Yes, Chloe? Hi, ma'am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so then um, P1 would be equal to a quarter X. Good. And then because we said that, wait, what letter is this? Sorry, um, let me just go up a little bit. It's hard for you guys okay. to see when I'm going up and down. Mm. Because we said that P1 is equal to T2. T2, or P1 is equal to T1, um, that will also be equal to a quarter X, and therefore STM is equal to a quarter X. Beautiful. Okay, that's lovely, Chloe. Thank you so much. The only thing we would need to just do in there, Chloe, is just explain why P1 equals T1 and just say tan chord theorem. Okay, so, but well done. So therefore T1 equals a quarter X, because of tan chord theorem. Um, or you could say P1 equals T1 tan chord theorem, therefore T1 equals a quarter X, therefore STM equals a quarter X. Yes, Katleho, you got your hand up. Uh, but ma'am, if we have already proven that T1 and P1 and T2 are equal, is it necessary for us to actually like give out the reason again? Because before proving this whole thing, we already did it. It's just that you erased it. Yes, but we've got to start. You see, the thing is, Katloho, when you are doing geometry, you're, it's, you're setting out an argument when you are proving something. And you have to do it in a logical, sequential order. So, yes, I wrote it down in the beginning, but it's actually not the first thing that I would write on the page. That's why I erased it. And I started because what I was trying to do is establish for you guys uh, what T1 uh, was equal to. So it was equal to P1. What, was, what I was then trying to do was get you to see how we would need to relate angle O2 to angle M, angle M to angle P1 and angle P1 to T1. So the story actually starts with O2. All right. So that would be the logical way in which they would want you no you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't lose you wouldn't lose marks but perhaps you would only get one mark for recognizing that t1 and p1 were equal to one another okay all right so generally what they do is that they they will give you like a maximum mark. So let's say if you didn't prove something, maybe they could say maximum three out of seven if it's not proved. Um, and then they could try and give you part marks for some of the connections that you did make. Okay, Voloshin, I see you've got a hand up. Do you want to ask a question? Hi, ma'am. Hi. Uh, could you please explain why you use 360 minus as the angle at the center and at X? Okay, because X is not the angle at the center that's equal to twice the angle at the circumference. So O1 is not double M. 
All right, so when you are working with angle at center is twice angle at circumference, let's just draw a bigger circle. All right, it's a really terrible circle. And you've got your radii up here, and then you've got these chords over here. The angle at the center is this angle over here, which is like O2. It is twice the angle at the circumference, which is M1. Oh, okay, I get so you, Mom. I get you. You. You, get, you. you get me now. Thank okay. You. All right. Okay, yes. so that's what yeah, you. so that's what you're looking at. No problem, Felicia. That's what you're looking at. They've just kind of turned it on its side just to make it a little bit more difficult as well. But that's essentially what it is. Okay, so um, what would we need to establish here? Well, we've got to have uh, the size of O2. We've got to have with reasons the size of M. Um, we have to have this angle's opposite equal sides. We have to establish that P1 is equal to quarter X with a reason. And then we've got to have tan chord theorem as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Maybe what they would do here is, I'm just trying to think, because it would be those, that's all statement reason, statement reason, statement reason. You're not going to have a mark for the last one. So probably a statement reason mark over there. And maybe even in the beginning, statement reason, just to try and give you guys the most amount of marks. Okay, so there we go. That's a nice problem solving question. Is this something that you've seen before, any of you? Has anyone ever seen this question before? No one, okay. Do your teachers at school, do they do problem solving questions with you like this in class? Yes, oh good. Oh really, oh okay, how interesting. Okay, so your teachers do do problem, that's good. Yeah, very important for us to practice our problem solving skills. Cool. Okay, let's move on and go and have a look at the next question. All right. So here, again, read the information first before starting to read the question. Here they tell us that ST and VT are tangents to the circle at S and V respectively. So what do you think of straight away when you just glance down and look at ST and VT? What do you think of straight away? when you see ST and VT are tangents to the circle. They're equal in length. What's the, what's the, the geometry reason for that? Tangents from a common point. Okay, so tangents from a common point. That's why ST equals VT. Cool. All right. <clears throat> also, we could be working with tan chord theorem because we have got a triangle on the inside of our circle. Okay, with V and T touching the tangent. So we've got tan chord theorem going on here as well. So R is a point on the circle, W is a chord, W is a point on chord RS such that WT is parallel to RV. So if they're telling us lines are parallel, what sort of angles do we think we might have? So we could have alternate angles, corresponding angles, absolutely or co-interior angles, absolutely, so all of those. Okay, so Bonga says that S2 and V3 are equal angles. Yes, they are angles opposite equal sides. Okay, cool beans, we're probably gonna use that as well. All right, what else do they tell us? WT intersects SV at K, that's fine, it doesn't link us to a theorem. And then they've said, let S2 be equal 
to x. All right. <clears throat> so now our starting point, right down with reasons, three other angles each equal to x. Okay, well, Bunga, you've already done one for us. You've said that V3 would be equal to X, and I quite agree because TS equals TV, they're tangents from the same point. So V3 equals X because of angles opposite equal sides. What else? What else equals X in this picture? What else equals X in the picture? W2. Why W2, Velocian? Angles in the same segment. Okay, but is SWVT a cyclic quad? Nope. So, nope. Okay, all right. We're going to prove that it is in 10.2.2a, <laughs> but we don't know that it's cyclic yet. So, we can't say angles in the same segment unless those four points are on a circle or we've proved that the quad is cyclic. R, mm -hmm. okay, so Chloe said R, why R, Chloe? Why R? What's the reason for R being equal to X? Good, tan cord theorem. Okay, so it, it could either come from S2 or from V3. Okay, both of those are equal to R because of tan chord theorem. Okay, guys, we've got two angles equal to X. What else equals X in the diagram? You guys look at the picture. I'm going to write down what you've said so long. All right, so we've got V3, R, and what else? Ah, there we go. You guys are very clever. Well done, lovely. So W3, excellent, because of corresponding angles. Well done, everybody. So W3 is also equal to X because of corresponding angles. And in this case, because WT is parallel to RV. Nice. Okay, so it's three angles, each equal to X, six marks, statement, reason, statement, reason, statement, reason. Okay, so statement, reason, statement, reason, statement, reason. Or actually, you know what, you know what, you know what, I don't think they would do that. Hang on a second, because they don't generally award this would probably just be one statement reason mark. And then here it would be statement reason for that and probably statement reason, statement reason, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. Okay, so they won't give you um, statement reason, two separate marks for something that comes from a theorem or not a theorem, something we've learned from grade eight. So if we're using alternate angles or angles around a point or exterior angle of triangle or angle sum and triangle or adjacent angle in a straight line, they're not going to give you a separate mark for that in grade 12. All right, that will normally always be one statement reason mark. Okay, cool. Got that. Got those angles that are equal to X. Now, in 10.2.2, prove that WSTV is a cyclic quad. Well, it can't be that difficult, guys, because it's only out of two. So can we use what we've already got to help us prove it? Hint, hint, hint what Velocian was saying. Look at the diagram. It's 
it's not about W2, by the way, sorry, but Volotion was on onto something. So it's not W2. Can anybody see it? you guys struggling to see it's a little bit okay so if you put your fingers at s and t all right and you go to w3 you've got x go back to s and t and then come to v3 you've also got x no see how so this is going to be converse angles in the same segment w3 equals x and v3 equals x so WSTV is cyclic because of converse angles in the same segment. Can the rest of you see that? Okay, so 10.2.2a, we've got W3 equals V3, both equal X, proved in 10.2.1. Therefore, WSTV is cyclic, converse angles in the same segment. You guys are all gone very quiet now. Can you see that? I'm sure everybody's just taking it in. Ovio oh, is saying yes, ma'am. Okay, Ovio. All oh, right. Taking it just, in. Okay. Can I go on to the next one? So proving that W triangle WRV is isosceles. Or does anybody want to ask something before I go on? Yes, Chloe. Hi, ma'am. Sorry, I Hi. lost like the last five minutes because my Wi-Fi just kicked me out. But hmm. um, I wanted to ask, um, I see you prove that, well, you said that W3 and V3 is the same because they're both equal X and that's why um, it's converse angles in the same segment. So we wouldn't have to say anything about like S1 being equal to T2. Would we only need the two angles? Yeah, yeah you only need the two angles. So when you prove converse angles in the same segment, you only need to prove one angle equals another one. So Either it could be S1 equals T2, or it could be T1 equals V2, or it could be W3 equals V3. Um, and then the last pair of angles that you could do, you could work with, would be W2 and uh, S2. So it's only one of those four that you would need to show. Right, so because it's only out of two marks, you know that it's not going to be a long and difficult solution. If they ask you to prove that a quad is cyclic and it's out of four marks or five marks, then you know that there's a lot of working involved. There's lots of connections that need to be made in order to prove it. But because this is only out of two marks, um, that also suggests to you that what you've just done in other words, writing down the other angles that are equal to X probably has something to do with the solution. There's not a big connection that has to be made here. All right, so it's it's simply identifying W3 and um, V3 as being equal and then stating that it's cyclic because of converse angles in the same segment. Okay, so this would be the statement and that would be the reason that's why it's only out of two. Okay, 
All right, now let's have a look at uh, part B or question B, triangle WRV is isosceles. So what do we need to show in order to prove that a triangle is an isosceles triangle matrix? What do they want from us? What proves that a triangle is isosceles? Sorry, I've got a mozzie here. What proves that a triangle is isosceles? Let's just have a look. So, velocity equals side, uh, Iola, two opposite sides need to be equal. Perfect. Two angles are equal or two sides are equal. Good. Yes. So, two angles are the same. Absolutely. So, if two angles are the same, then the sides opposite those angles are the same. Okay, but yes, you're all correct. That was nicely put. Okay, so we can see triangle WRV over here. I'll just highlight it in yellow just to help it stand out a little bit. And we've already got that one of the angles is equal to X. Okay, that's angle R. So if we can, oh goodness me, what on, ah, what am I doing here, guys? That looks, oh, nasty, sorry. Just try and get rid of some of that. Sorry, it's not so easy to <laughs> write on this pad sometimes, especially when I'm highlighting lines. Okay, so if we can prove that either W1 or V1 is X, we've got it. Because then we've got two equal angles, two equal sides, and it's isosceles. All right, so that means we either need W1, yes, quite right, Iola, either we need W1 is X or V1 is X. What do you think? We've also just proved that WSTV is a cyclic quad. Hint, 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 hint. Now we're going back to what Velocian said in the beginning. <laughs> <clears throat> Can anybody see it? Okay, let me ask you guys a question. Why is W2 equal to X? Why is W2 equal to X? Angles in the same set. Beautiful. Okay, because we've proved that WSTV is cyclic, right? So angles in the same segment. All right. What does W2 equal? True, Pinga, but that doesn't help us because we don't know how big S1 or V2 are. That's it, Simpiwe. Okay, W2 equals V1. Why does W2 equal V1? Look at the diagram, guys. Why does W2 equal V1? What sort of angles are they? That's it. They are alternate angles. Brilliant. Okay, so they are alternate angles, and that is because W, hang on, let's just close the chat quickly. WT is parallel to SV. All right, so that means that angle V1 is also equal to X. All right, so therefore angle R equals angle V1 because they both equal X. Therefore, so now we're going to do the sides opposite equal angle. So therefore WR, therefore WR equals WV. 
because they are sides opposite equal angles. So therefore, triangle WRV is isosceles. Okay, so just going back to that again, guys, we said that W2 was X as well because of angles in the same segment. Then we said W2 is equal to V1 because they are alternate angles because WT is parallel to RV. And if angle R and angle V1 are equal to each other, then WR equals WV because they are sides opposite equal angles. So two sides in the triangle are equal, therefore it is an isosceles triangle. How are we doing? Is everybody okay? Cool. Avaya's happy. How's everybody else? You're all good. All right. Okie doke. So that was out of four. <laughs> it is. It is, Pinga. Everybody struggles with Euclidean geometry. All right. It is definitely one of the hardest things that you do. All right. But that's why we're practicing to try and make it easier and more accessible to you guys. The more, spend, more time we spend doing these sorts of questions and talking about this sort of stuff, the easier it's going to become. Okay, so we had to have that. We had to have this to prove this. Um, and then that and that. So statement reason, statement reason, statement reason. Okay, so those are the four marks. Let's do the next bit. Now we need to prove the triangle WRV, which we've already highlighted in yellow, is similar to triangle TSV. Let's highlight that. So here is TSV. There we go. So why are these two triangles similar to one another? What information have we got? Well, we know that S2 is X. We know that V3 is X. We know R is X. We know V1 is X. So we can prove angle, angle, angle in this case. All right. So. 10.2.2 C, goodness me, 10.2.2 C. All right, so we will say in triangle, delete that, in triangle WRV and triangle TSV. Number one, angle R equals angle S2 both equal X. Angle V1 is equal to angle V3. They both equal X. And we're allowed to say that because we've proved why R is equal to X up here. We were given that S2 is equal to X and we've explained why V3 is equal to X. We've proved it over here. 
and we've got V1 is equal to X in 10.2.2B. So we're allowed to do that. All right, so the remaining angles of the triangle would be W1. So our third point here is that W1 is equal to T1 plus T2. That is because of angles in a triangle or the remaining angles of a triangle. Now, if you are proving similarity, you cannot use angle sum and triangle as your first reason. It can only be used as the third reason, right? And there are two ways in which they can mark you proving the triangles are similar. Either they give you marks for the first two reasons and then for your statement with your reason at the end, or they give you marks for these three. It just depends on what it is. So in a situation like this, they would probably give you marks for, let me just write it down, similar to triangle TSV, angle, angle, angle. Because we've used angle sum and triangle, uh, it's probably going to be statement, reason, statement, reason, and then your reason over there. So remember when you prove that the triangles are similar, you've got to state angle, angle, angle. Okay, because you don't want to lose out on those marks. That really wasn't very difficult. So B was a little bit harder, but C was a little bit easier. So Pinga and everybody else, Bonga, I think you were also saying Gyo earlier, don't throw the entire question away just because you can't maybe do the first thing or the second thing. Go and have a look further down and see if there's stuff that you can answer. So don't throw these three marks away just because you can't do question B. All right, or well, at least look at it, okay, before you decide that you can't do it. Okie dokes. So now we're getting into something a little bit more interesting. They want us to prove that RV over SR equals KV over TS. We are not allowed to write that statement down because that's what we're trying to prove, right? But there is something that we can do um, to manipulate the statement if we want to. First of all, are there any sides here that have an equal side in the diagram? Is RV equal to something else? Is SR equal to something else? Oh, that's awesome, Penga. I'm so excited to hear that. Once you guys get your marks back, I hope that you'll be happy to share um, some results. And I'm really hoping that for every single one of you, there's going to be an improvement from June. So a question like this is difficult because we don't really know where to start. Velocian? So ma'am, since we proved that these two triangles are similar, we can then use uh, corresponding sides in proportion. Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. Um, and generally speaking, 99.9% .9 of the time for lotion, that's exactly what you would do. You would write down the corresponding sides that are in proportion to one another straight after you have proved that um, triangles are similar. What you will see in this question, however, is that that by itself does not help you solve the problem. So it's part of it, but it's not the whole thing. All right. So I'll do that. I'll, I'll, 10.2.2 ABC. I think this is part D. Let's do that. So Velocian is saying we're going to write WR. So first two over first two equals second two over second two equals first and last over first and last. And we say corresponding sides in proportion 
or you can also say similar triangles, um, follow whatever your teacher has given you at school. All right, now you'll see here we don't have everything. All right, so let's just write this. You, you wouldn't do this, but I'm doing it because we're online. So what we, what we want is required to prove. Let's just put that over here. So it was RV over SR equals KV over TS. All right. So if you go back and you have a look for lotion, you can see here you've got RV there, you've got RV. Here you've got SR, but you don't have SR over here. Uh, KV is also missing. There's no KV in what we've done here. And you've got TS over there. So you could be forgiven for thinking that maybe that's the proportion that you need to start working with. But it doesn't, it, as I said to you, it's part of it, but it's not the whole thing. Often when you've got a diagram like this and you've got tangents from the same point, what you can do is you can replace a side with an equal side. So in sort of some rough working on the side, because this is just giving us an idea of which triangles we may need to work in, although that's not the only way we could do this question. In this rough work on the side, we know, if we just go back up to the diagram, TS equals TV because they are tangents from the same point. So this is TS or ST over here. It's equal to TV. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the RV at the top, the SR at the bottom, and I'm going to replace the TS with TV the TS with the TV. And then I'm going to use a strategy that you would have been taught in class, which is to either go across the numerators and try and make a triangle or go across the denominators and try and make a triangle. So now we're saying to ourselves, is RVK a triangle? So have a look, is RVK a triangle? Looking at the diagram, is RVK a, di a triangle? No, RVK is not a triangle. So going across doesn't work. So now we go from numerator denominator. So is RVS a triangle? Is RVS a triangle? Yes, it is. And now let's go back. Is KVT a triangle? Is KVT a triangle? Yes, it is. Okay, so we have managed to identify the triangles that they want us to work in. We can prove that those triangles are similar to one another. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub out the yellow and this is why having a diagram sheet is so nice for you because you can write on your question paper and you can write on the diagram sheet. So if you highlight too many things, you can always, so we're looking here at this. That triangle over there. And it was this triangle. over here. Okay. <clears throat> now, I just want to point out before we start, oh, we don't have much time. I ran out of time in my other class as well. Um, remember, we if we want to prove that they are similar triangles, we're going to do it by angle, angle, angle. Okay. So this angle over here is equal to that angle over there because they are alternate angles. The other thing that you've got is your angle X over here, which is equal to your angle X over there. 
Can you see that? Okay, and then we would have angle S1 equal to angle two by angle sum and triangle. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> what I want to do in all honesty is I want to begin my question in this way. I want to say in triangle RVS and triangle KVT. Point number one. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. <laughs> Point number one, okay. Angle K4 equals SVR. Angle SVR equals K4 because they are alternate angles. And that is because WT is parallel to RV. WT is parallel to RV. Point number two. Angle V3 equals R because they both equal X. Angle R equals angle V3. Both equal X. Point three. S1 and T2. S1 equals T2 angle sum in triangle. Okay, now we need to get the order correct. Okay, so if I say triangle, now can you see I've used the R and the V and the S all down the side over here, and the angles associated with the second triangle I've used on this side. That's going to help me get my order correct. So here I'm going to say R sorry, V, R, S is similar to triangle K, V, T. And it's very important that you, or, you get the order correct in this line, right? It doesn't need to be correct up at the top, but it does need to be correct down here. Angle, angle, angle. All right, and now... I'm going to write my corresponding sides in proportion. I know poor old Yulinda is trying to do her poll at the same time. Yulinda, I've run out of time in both my lessons today. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> I hope I'm going to manage to finish this too. I didn't want to run out of time again. So what did we need? We needed RV, there's RV, here's RV. Uh, here is SR, there's RS. I needed KV, there's KV. And let's grab a different color. Mm. Oh already used mm, oh, purple okay and I need a TV and remember TV and TS are equal to one another okay so now <clears throat> you can write this as RV over KV equals SR over TV. Now I need to just manipulate it just very quickly. Um, if you've got RV over SR over here, so here you've got it in the numerators. So you are allowed to say RV over SR. So the numerator over numerator is going to be equal to denominator over denominator. So that will be KV over TV. 
but TV equals TS proved above. We did that was the very first thing we did because they were tangents from the same point. So therefore RV over SR is equal to KV over TS. I'm just checking myself. There we go. All right, that's not the only way we could actually do this question. 